So we are first going to do that exactly that uh, in our uh, uh, in our class that we already have, which is our warm class. Just as a reminder, first we have uh, the public parts. So whenever people want to use our warm class, they basically look at the first lines uh, of this header file, and they see the warm class, and then everything that is public, you know, which is accessible to them if they use the warm class. Private usually does not interest them, so they should not really look at that. So we will we have already quite a few things. So we have uh, this here as a constant, this here as a constant. So we can actually create exactly that. So just as we saw here, you basically put constants uh, right behind the function definition. That's exactly what we can do here. So we put constant here because, oh, no, not here. Because if we move the warm, x and y will change here, right? So this will definitely not be a constant. But drawing the warm, for, for instance, will be, right? <laughs> And the same for um, uh, uh, for this over here. So also here we uh, use a constant, and over here we will use a constant as well. Um, and that way we basically make sure that whenever something happens here, um, and this is basically just returning something, we can see that. Um, and, and if we later then um, expand on this, this will basically um, uh, be very clear what happens there. Now, one thing that I also wanted to uh, have, because we also saw that already, is header guards. To remind you, header guards is basically whenever you, imp uh, whenever you include a header file, uh, or for every header file that you create yourself, a header, header guard makes sure that the compiler for a particular object will look only at this header only once, and not multiple times. And for that, we use the pragma uh, if not defined, and then we create uh, a, a definition, like a macro, that uh, is usually started with underscore h, underscore, and then um, often the path, but also the type of, of, of class or the type of file that you have. And this is basically showing if the compiler goes into this file, and if this particular uh, macro is not defined yet, then we define it. And then uh, we continue and parse all the rest of this file. And at the end, uh, we have to start with, uh, uh, say, um, end if, right? That is the, the, end, the end of the macro. And then we usually also explain why or what type of end if this is. So, so oops, what, what am I doing? Uh, capitals. So, um, if not defined, then define that and do all the rest. These are macros. These are things that the compiler will take care of. And at the end... We will say not big end if, but small end if, um, and then we also usually supply which macro we were talking about. So this one over here, right? And this makes sure that later, if multiple other modules will call the warm module because that's a module that we just created, it will be only parsed once by the compiler and not multiple times. Uh, this is this is. This is called the header guard, and this is the trick that, that allows you to, um, to avoid problems later. In this case, we don't have this problem yet because we include it only once in our main function uh, or in, our, in the CPP file that holds our main function. But later, we will probably add a couple of, of other things that will, might also include more. In that case, this will lead to problems that we can avoid this way. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of all of these variables. And all of the um, other functions that we've seen over here. So we've seen that we have global variables that we suddenly uh, uh, that we suddenly define when we include this this module uh, called warm. And this is something we don't want to have. And this is something that we can also do with the class. So instead of going to have just a, a lot of these functions that can be called from our main function. Instead of that, we're going to make a second class, I would say. That makes the most sense. And what do we call this? So it's basically a class that holds everything that we'll need for the warm game. So let's call it warm game. So it's a class called warm game. And one of the things that this warm game will have is uh, a lot of data, a lot of uh, uh, variables that, as we have seen, are all private. So let's start with those. Um, and what do we have? We have a warm that we, that, that we control in our warm game. So that is one of the first things that we'll definitely need. So we can get rid, rid of this one over here, this global variable 
that is uh, nasty if we have that basically, or that that can be dangerous as we uh, as we said last week. So we'll we'll avoid that, and we have now um, this wrapped into um, the the warm class. Now, there are a couple more things that we use in our game, however. Uh, so for instance, what we have is this character that the user can press. So also that is something that we will need. Voila. Um, or um, user key that is pressed, for instance. The player's warm. Let's do some, um, some annotations here or some comments. Another thing that we definitely have is the food x and y coordinates. So also that we will uh, we'll put here. So food x, we can put them together, food y. Those are also there. Um, what else do we have here? The score and the score string. So that's exactly what we can actually um, uh, have here. So score is one of the things. Players, current score, current score. And we have a character string for displaying the score. Also, that is something that we'll use. And as we said, uh, a string is basically a number of characters. We will uh, put a maximum to 80 here in this case. Um, string to display score. Voila, there. So now we can get rid can get rid of all of this over here. And we're completely, we don't have any more global variables that are somehow uh, appearing when we include our warm in our main function. They're part, part now of the warm game thing. Now, if we see then what we have as functions, then most of these functions uh, we can probably include as public functions. So things that are called in our uh, main function and that uh, we can just use as part of the warm gain function. So we can just get all of this here and include this here. Now, some of those things will not be necessary. We'll see in a second. So let's do some indentation. Voilà. So now all the functions are part of warm game that we'll call in our main function and they will operate on these particular variables, which they can because this is all inside the class called warm game. Okay? Now, some things we don't need, like this init function, actually it's much more elegant instead of having an explicit init function to have a constructor. So, and as we said just a second ago, the constructor is um, declared as the name of the class, so warm game. Um, and in the constructor, we can do exactly what init has been doing. So we get rid of init explicitly, uh, go to the init case. Let's see where init is over here. Init is over here. So let's put that at the total at the beginning of all the member functions of the class. And um, as we said, it doesn't return anything. Oh, thank you. So warm game is basically what we need, not warm. Uh, and this basically now gets called whenever we instantiate an object of the class warm game. So whenever that is done, we basically instantiate these things over here. And we can complete, uh, continue to use exactly this. Right? So that is uh, as we had it before. Now for all of those other functions, we basically um, oops, we can uh, define them as parts of warm game. So clear screen is part of a warm game, has quit is part of a warm game. So has quit, just to remind you, is to check whether the current character that uh, the user has put in um, is not a queue. If it's queue, then the user has quit. Um, which is a little bit silly. I mean, I think the, the better way to say that is actually has not quit, right? So that, because that is actually what's being tested here. So user did not press Q. Just for later when uh, we forget about all of that. So we'll also change this over here. So user has not quit. Then user input basically asks for uh, the user input. Warm game again. Voila, that is still the same. It uses W1, which is now part of the class. And it uses the C, which is also part of the class over here. 
Uh, draw worm is definitely part of the worm game. Uh, draw food as well. That's definitely what worm game should be or should do. Um, draw the score. That's that's something that needs to be done as well. And clean up is actually something that could be part of the destructor, for instance. So clean up in this case means we want to close the, the terminal screen that is uh, supplied by us by the library and curses, right? So that does all the graphical, well, semi-graphical things. So in that case, we can actually define uh, a warm game destructor. And as we said, this needs to start with a tilde. So we can actually have in this case a destructor that we also need to put here. So instead of cleanup, we have our destructor for warm game. Up. And this is something we put usually at the beginning. Okay. Did I forget anything? Here, I mean. So now we have basically two classes. One class warm and one class warm game. And warm game, as soon as we instantiate that, we have already the warm in our warm game and lots of other variables, but only when we instantiate this. So this is why, so let's save explicitly everything over here. Um, when we go to our warm v1.cpp file, which has um, everything that defines what the game does, we can get uh, rid of those global functions that we somehow instantiated and start a warm game. And the way we do that is say we have a, um, an instance of, instance of warm game, which we can call game for instance. Note that we only have one constructor which doesn't take any parameters, so we don't need to do this explicitly. We could, but we let's not, let's not do that. And this init, whatever happened in init, is already done. So as soon as we call or in, uh, make an instance of class warm game, which is called game, we already have the initialization taken care of in our constructor. And likewise, whenever we leave the main function, whatever we have in a destruct of warm game is automatically called as well, which is quite nice because we don't need to do this cleanup over here in this case. So we can also get rid of that. And we basically then call all the member functions that warm game has. So, and we do that with game dot, right? So this is a member function of our instance game. Um, this is not quit, right? So while the game has not quit, we do the following. And then um, we say the game checks for user input. The game clears the screen. The game then draws the warm. The game draws the food. And the game draws the score, okay? And this, I hope, if we make that, oh, leads to error. So I, I, I uh, did something bad. Let's see. What did I do? Aha, I forgot to do something for sure here. What did I, let's go for worm.cpp. Um... So there's something with the draw function. Okay, there's one thing I definitely forgot here. Has anyone seen it? Semicolon. Semicolon, exactly. Good, thank you. So that is that is definitely one of the problems. Let's make again because there's another thing that uh, is, is wrong. So for draw, we have something not matching. And that is true indeed as well. All right, so that is the other thing. Um, so if we go to warm CVP, we basically also need to provide the const here. So we have said uh, draw is a constant function. Um, whenever we have something, so the constructor, the move function, they don't change anything. But also here we have to say that this is a constant. Right? So this is also important to have here. Then comes the warm function, I think. Let's see if that is the case, if that makes it. Okay, so those are the two functions that we had. A bit of mistyping, I forgot to put a constant there. I'm sure you're well aware that this happens all the time when you're programming by now. Good, so let's see what if this whole thing really works as advertised. So we have our worm, and if we eat a bit of food, hop, then our score gets increased. Okay, so that still works. What have we gained? 
we don't have any more global functions, we don't have any global variables anymore. Things are nicely wrapped up in, um, into a nice and, and more readable, I would argue, uh, main function, where you say I instantiate a worm game called game, and this game has certain member functions that get called. And the nice thing is here, we don't, I mean, we don't have anything that is global, so if other programs, or we don't need to know about these things, these are nicely encapsulated. Okay, so let's do one more thing. Um, that will be making this a little bit in, more interesting. Let's um, give a color to the worm, first of all. We saw that if you add a, if you want to, um, let's put this over here. We saw that there is this trick in NCurses that um, you can basically uh, initialize a pair. Let's do that first. Uh, hop. So we initialize a third pair. Note that I'm doing this in the worm game, and that worm is using this for now. This is a little bit hacky, but that's something that will. Uh, um, fix in a second. And let's make the entire worm uh, something more bright because this slightly white on a black, 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 black ground, black background is not that really, not that nice. So let's say, um, for instance, or let's say a white. So those uh, O's that we draw are white and we draw them, for instance, on a yellow background. So in that case, our Warm is a little bit slightly yellowish, whitish, which I think is okay for a warm. Yeah? And just like we've seen uh, when we draw the food, we basically just do an or with this color pair. We can do exactly that for drawing our warm. So also there, we basically add this color or define that we have to draw this in a particular uh, color pair. So basically white foreground, back, uh, yellow, black, uh, Yellow background. Okay. Good. Another thing to make it more interesting is, for instance, we could um, make the food not stay there and sit until uh, sit there until the worm eats the food. I would say maybe the food is something that moves. You know, that is something that that would make it a lot more interesting. And also there we can repeat what we've seen already with um, uh, the switch statements. So before we draw the food we first move it a little bit. So move the foot a little bit. And this is, uh, how are we going to do this? Our foot has a particular X and Y coordinate, foot X, foot Y. We can, for instance, randomly move it to the left, to the right, to the top or to the bottom, just like we're moving our worm to the uh, left, right, top and bottom. And let's do exactly that. So just like we did this uh, for the worm, we can basically say, Oh, no, we first need to instantiate something, which is the direction. What is happening today? Uh, direction. So this is um, where does our food move to? And that is that is uh, a variable. And let's um, put that at a certain, initialize that to a certain value. Mm, well, let's say zero. That's kind of easy. And then we um, say that direction equals, and then we've seen this random function uh, for uh, over here for changing the food coordinates. We use exactly the same trick again. So we say we use the random function to create a random number, and then we restrict this number using the module operator to a certain range. So for instance, the range 0 to 5, I would say, where um, for instance, 0 is not move, 1, 2, 3, 4 is moving left, right, up, down. Yeah. So, so we say basically you can, uh, we can go from 0 to 5. And that, that is basically what uh, we, can, we can have here. So by modulo 5, it will be restricted from 0 to 4. Yeah. Okay, and then we do a switch on this direction. And then, as we saw with switch, we basically have different cases. Um, and we don't have to do the characters because there's no key being pressed here that has a certain code. We basically just use the int that, uh, that is directory, so the integer that is directory. So if 
If zero, then nothing happens, I would say. That is uh, what, what happens by default. Now, if it's one, then it moves to the left. Um, so basically, in that case, food x um, will, uh, will go to the left, so it will be decreased. We can do that a lot easier this way. And we have to also test that we can actually do this. So um, I saw, uh, we, we see, we've seen that earlier as well. So we can say if um, food x is still bigger than 0, right? Then, then we subtract 1 from food x and then break. I'm doing this very compact because then I can just, with one line, duplicate this and then hope that we can do exactly that for all the rest. So for two, we're doing exactly the opposite. If the food is smaller than uh, is x columns or lines, columns, so columns minus one, then we increment the food, right? So ah, there. Now, if the if we um, have three as a random number, then our food y reaches we we we, we decrease. And if we have the case of 4, then we do exactly the same for y in case of the lines being 1. And we increment that. Okay? Understood? Or is this okay? I'm, I think this will work. We said also that usually you have a default. In this case, it makes sense. Um, because if nothing is being, uh, is, is being done, um, well, actually... It doesn't matter. So if it's zero or any other number would appear, then um, nothing would happen. So I think we don't really need a default case here. And this will probably work already. So we basically get a random number between zero and four. If it's zero, we don't do anything. If it's one to four, we move the foot one left, right, up or down. Whenever draw foot is called, right? Normally, you would have to put this also in the contract, so basically the, in the header file. So whenever um, you say then draw food over here, that is basically also changing the food. And this is why I waited here with putting constants there, because in this case, the draw food really also moves the food around, for instance. Yeah? So we can't put a constant here. Draw warm, that is a constant, for instance. Draw score. Draw score. That's a good point. Does it change the score when we when we say draw score? No, no but we do change uh, the string over here. Now, one of the things we could do is actually put this string not as a global string. We we could increment it over here. Um, in fact, I think this is a good point. We don't really need it here. We can just say the string gets uh, gets created here each time. Well, let's let's not let's not do that. It's actually too. Uh, uh, let's just do it with the draw warm parts. So it's only there we will uh, say um, this is a constant, and it basically just uh, calls draw. The warm is getting drawn, but that's about it. Right. Okay. Anything else? L let's try if this works. Oh. I have a what? Thirty-one number when it's small brigade. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Right on the right side. Uh, on the left side. Uh, on the right side. Thirty-one. Ah, oh, thank you. It's great to know that you're following. Uh, we saved some time now as well. So let's do make now. Oh, oh. undefined reference to warm gate draw warm. Um, whoa, Houston, we have a problem. What is what is happening here? So we have we have it here. Did I not save here? Du, 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 du. Draw warm cons. We have it here. So I wonder what the problem is. I save because this is basically what I had here. So why is warm game draw warm suddenly not working anymore? I mean, this is also just a draw function. So basically, and nothing is returned. Let's see. Somehow, it is a, it's basically a linker error. Yeah, this is basically when 
so basically everything compiled, uh, but then it could not find that particular function anymore. It could be, aha, let's try something. Aha. Anyone knows what, that's, what, what really happens? So um, I, basically, I basically just change this into constants, into the header file. And what I changed into the header file did, seems that it did not get picked up by the make file. Um, and this is because the header file in the make file, let's see what's in the make file, we basically have dependencies over here um, uh, not for the header file. And basically, it was picked up by the make file. That's, um, so this sometimes happens. And the, the best way to do this is to automatically clean every O file before you really do anything. Um, or to create here a dependency on the header file of worm.h. So we changed worm.h, um, which then led to something not being updated while making. So now it works. So we can make it. Everything uh, went as, 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 uh, as expected. And if we now have uh, our worm, it basically has a worm that is of a slightly warmish color, I would say, and food that is a little bit harder to get, right? I mean, not, not really that hard, but... Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> that cheeky one, honestly. Oh, and it's still... <laughs> uh, oh, this is... Ah, there, we finally have it. So this is a game that is a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer, right? Okay, good.